4th November, Chi made an open sharing post saying 2022 is coming to an end. How many cubes do you buy this year in total? And that was when I realized I bought an Aosu WRM to call corner magnetize. I gave my Ultron 11M to a friend and bought a new Ultron WRM and bought it into an Ultron 12M. Then the Alpha WRM came out and I called the Alpha WRM. So basically got four WRMs within the same year. Technically this prototype Alpha WRM counts as the fifth cube, but I got it via trading away my previous Ultron WRM, plus one and minus one at the same time. Uh, it doesn't count. Performance, the Ultron WRM doesn't really have much to write home about, other than calling it the perfection of 6x6. It's the lightest and the fastest 6x6 by a long shot, even faster than the Alpha WRM. And it definitely competes with my Ultron 12, which I believe actually has an extra boost of speed because I do think the rod magnet in this corner is actually repelling the, the rod magnets from these two corners when I'm crossing the 45 degree mark and it only attracts a core magnet when it hits the 90 degree mark. It also has nice and effortless reverse corner cutting on almost every point on the cube. And, and the forward corner cutting is quite good either, I'm not going to show it everywhere but pretty much quite good. And despite all its large holes, it has really good stability. It retains its cubic shape. It feels solid even during fast turning or like fast 3x3 three three stage outer layer turning as well. Which is not usually something I can say about most 6x6s. Six six a lot of them do feel that they squish and deform a bit more when you're doing the last stage. And here is how the Outshoot WRM compares to a Shadow V2 when you squish the cube. The size is also a perfect sweet spot in my opinion. It doesn't shrink the cube excessively much or it doesn't shrink the outer layers excessively much to a point where it becomes annoying to hold or handle. But at the same time, I do think 63mm is a little nicer to push for fast turning as opposed to some of the older and larger cube sizes such as 64.5 which was the previous smallest 6x6. And the size difference isn't really that big. I can tell that it's smaller and I do enjoy it a little bit better, but it's not some super dramatic size decrease like what happened to the 7x7s. The magnets of this cube are also pretty perfect. The second and third layer feel quite similar to each other, although I do think the third is a little stronger. And then the outer is the weakest. The weak magnets allows you to turn the cube really effortlessly, yet the, the inner layers being stronger than the outers keep it together and prevent annoying issues like unnecessary double turns. Overall, I do think the Ultra WRM is just designed to be turned fast. Each turn takes less effort than every other past 6x6 six six that I know of. Transitioning between turns is just extremely fluid and not super blocky, which is something that happens to non-flexible 6x6. Six six. And the cube also doesn't flop around like the flexible 6x6s. Six the size is perfect and the mechanism also strongly inhibits deforming lockups. The Ultra WRM is one of the few cubes where Every negative thing I have to say about it is a minor quality of life thing that doesn't really have much of a role in the performance. For example, the cube came in frosted by default, and by right it should go away with progressive use, but, but by left I just polished it so I don't have to play with a frosted cube from the start. Another thing about this cube is that the magnets are really loud even though they are weak, especially on the outer layers. This one just happens to be an unfortunate side effect of the tin plastic. And the third one is an unfortunate side effect of how the mechanism is designed, which I will now go into. The Ultra WRM features the same anti-deforming mechanism. It's been around since the GTS series. However, I always found it weird that the Alpha and Ultra GTS have the anti-deforming mechanism, while the Ultra GTS does not. It was not until the MGC6 where this mechanism was implemented into 6x6, and as if to mirror this weirdness, the MGC5 and 7 do not feature this mechanism. The WRM series is the first to implement this mechanism across all three of their 5, 6 and 7. I would love to see this mechanism take over 8x8 and 9x9 as well, because those cubes love to pop. A lot. And looking at where all the individual pieces are hollowed out to lighten the cube, the pieces just look very clean and well designed. One thing I've never noticed before is that the alignment mechanism has an extra anti-stick design, specifically on where the square ring contacts the circular pillar. The Outshu is also the first to shrink its core smaller than every past even layer puzzle, usually due to how the alignment mechanism of an even cube works. There's always this circle in the middle with a pillar right here that is locked to the core. It's not allowed to move because this circle has a bump on it that will hook onto one of the middle layers. There's only this square around it that moves. Even cubes usually have a thick stem to ensure that this is properly locked and the circle won't move. Many odd cubes have moved past that and just opted for a much smaller and thinner core. And you can tell that the center stock 
it's just much thinner. You can also compare that in the thickness of the middle layer pieces. The Outshoot WRM, while still using the traditional alignment mechanism, uses a new core that is of the same dimensions and features of an odd cubes core. Specifically, it has a much narrower stock and it also has the same reinforcement ribs. Quite hard to see here because the Outshoot uses a black core, but you can tell from the side view you can actually see a little bit of a reinforcement rib. It's a slightly newer design that's more similar to the RS3 where the reinforcement rib is curved while in the older design it's just a straight rib across like you are seeing on the Vogue 5. This means that the middle layer is just as thin as it is on an odd cube. You also see that the middle layer piece is equally thick compared to the Vogue 5 and as usual a thinner middle layer would equal more space to design the outer pieces to push them inwards and make the mechanism more stable. One unfortunate side effect of doing this however is that the packs that hold the centerpiece are actually much smaller than they are compared with a cube with a thicker stock. Personally, I've only seen one other person's Outshoot WRM core break and I don't know how it broke, whether it's just regular turning or the cube met with some violent force as it's dropping on the ground. So I don't really know how prominent this issue is. However, I got paranoid and super glued a bit of plastic dust on every one of the center packs. So this hardens into a thick, like, rock hard layer. And if you're wondering where I got the plastic dust from, I actually plucked out a few pieces for my VCube 6. Florian modded them, and then I collected the dust and super glued it onto my Outshoot WRM. So my Outshoot WRM contains VCube 6 plastic. Another notable feature of the Outshoot WRM is that the distribution of the primary and coloured plastic is very similar to most Chi cubes, where only parts that show up on the exterior are coloured. And even ignoring all the myths of how dye pigments and plastic interact, I gladly welcome this design choice. It gives the cube a much cleaner and more consistent look and it doesn't pointlessly waste dye on parts that are not going to show up on the outside. Chi has been doing this since the Shadow V1 and it's refreshing to see this design make it to a more cube. The Outshoot WRM is one of those cubes that I would describe as not very beginner friendly. If you're not used to turning a big cube or, or if you have an aggressive turning style, you risk locking up or maybe even damaging the cube. And I would still recommend the MGC to such skill levels since it's cheaper and more stable and even though I'm personally not much of an MGC fan since I find it too stiff for my liking, I do see such like, stiffness being able to help more aggressive turners, especially during ages and 3x3 stage. Mm -hmm. However, if you're a high level competitor who can turn with the utmost smoothness and accuracy, the Outshoot WRM has a lot of potential. The size, speed and weight gives you quite a lot of room to take advantage of once you can get used to it. On paper, it takes all the checkboxes of what it takes to be the best 6x6 on the market. In practice, however, even though the WRM is built to raise the limit of how many turns per second can possibly be clocked, look ahead and efficiency still play much bigger roles in the 6x6 solve and only skill can help you there, considering how good the older cubes are already. Just improving hardware alone barely makes a dent. So I average just slightly faster with the WRM at around 213, while on my second Outshoot GTS and both my Shadow V2s, I would have averaged around 215. The GTS and Shadow V2 also have plenty of reasons why I still want to go back to them. The GTS has a much thicker and more durable feel, while the Shadow V2 is about in between the GTS and the WRM. The WRM seems to really prioritize performance over everything else, so I do think certain subjective elements like the premiumness of the feel are somewhat sacrificed. I've tried putting in more loot into the Outshoot WRM, but the cube still feels really thin. Of course, this thinness is one of the big factors contributing why the cube is so fast and light and can be turned with such a high TPS. With three other 6x6s on hand with really nice turning feels and just a very slightly worse performance, I do see myself saving up my WRM for competitions and using my GTS Magnetic Core Shadow V2 and Cosmic PVC Shadow V2 to grind for skill improvements, rather than just using the WRM 100%. However, if I had to recommend just one cube for the purposes of getting the best times, it would be the WRM.